I played 100 Days of Stardew Valley Expanded, Joja Edition. This is going to be my first ever Joja run, and I thought it would be fun once again to use the Expander mod, because I know that this adds a good amount to the story of Joja than just buying those bundles. This time, I wanted to add a little backstory to my farmer, but before I get into that, I'd love if you could like and subscribe. This style of video takes many hours to make and your support would help a ton. Now, here's that story. A Joja employee was having a particularly bad day at work. We all get them, you know what I mean. The ones that give you the urge for change, greener pastures and whatnot. This is the time that felt right to open that sealed envelope Grandpa gave her all those years ago. She had a good read to find out his farm had been left to her, and right there and then she decided to quit her job and go for it. She packed up a city apartment and donated most of her belongings, but when it was time to move, the fear and regret set in at the prospect of leaving the comfort of the city, as well as the guaranteed, albeit modest, income from Joja Corp. After all, she didn't hate working for the company, she was just having a really bad day. But alas, it was too late. A new person was ready to move into her apartment for their own fresh start. She'd bet they'd even taken her job too. A little overwhelmed, she got on that bus, but when she arrived, she found out that Pelican Town has a Joja Mart too so at least she could continue to support the corporation that meant so much to her, and have some of those home comforts too. This brings me to the rules and goals of this playthrough. Here's what we want to achieve in our first 100 days on Thriving Farm. I want to get 10 hearts with Morris. If we reach this, we'll unlock some Joja themed props and items. I want to upgrade the house at least once, the tiny little cabin just won't do. I want to fully complete the Joja route, because this is a Joja run after all. And finally, I want to make 1 million gold. This will unlock the ability for us to buy a tractor. I should clarify that the unlocks I add aren't part of the expander mod or anything. These are extra mods I'll add if we hit these goals. To add some challenge and fun though, we've got a couple of rules to live by. The first one, no shopping at other stores for most items. All my season stuff have got to come from Joja Mart, but services like buildings, upgrades and geodes are all fair game. I'll allow myself to buy animals too. The other two exceptions are backpacks because I have a loot goblin, and fishing rod upgrades because I suck at fishing and I need all the help I can get. I can also use the travelling merchant because she's a smuggler, she's not part of the rest of them. And I'll also allow myself to buy recipes and anything I need for perfection if there's no other way to get them. Our other rule is that we must drink every Joja Cola we obtain. It's our favourite after all. And if I forget at any point, I need to go spend my hard earned gold to buy some just to drink. All of the mods I use will be linked in the description, and without further ado, let's get started! As is customary on day one, I picked up my parsnips and cleared a little space to plant them. I spent most of my energy on chopping down trees, being sure to plant any mixed seeds I could find. With my energy empty, it was time to introduce myself to all the new neighbours. Not forgetting to stop at Joja Mart for seeds of course, which is a good time to mention I added a clearance bin mod, which mostly contains rip-offs. But today I got so lucky! One gold strawberry seeds on my first day! I couldn't believe my eyes, I bought them all because it's usually Pierre who sells them on spring 13th and we won't be giving him our money. I got to most of the villagers by the end of the day and made sure to leave enough time to plant those strawberries in a pattern to allow for basic sprinklers in the future. Before going to sleep, I rearranged the house to get my bed closer to the door. This will save a lot of passing out later on, and that night we got level 1 foraging. Day 2 started with water in my crops. Most days will start like this, but to prevent it getting repetitive, just assume I do it from now on. It was also Morris's birthday. I didn't have a chance to get him anything good, so I raided the clearance bin for a gold summer spangle, which he thought was just okay. It was better than nothing, alright? <laughs> I went to pick up my fishing rod, skipping the cutscene having seen it a million times, and grabbed myself a training rod too to help me level. I did my first bit of fishing on the bridge just north of the beach, because I accepted a request to catch three sunfish. A few in-game hours later, I caught my third sunfish and hit level 1 fishing, wasting no time in going to ask for my reward. That evening, I met Sebastian, who was the last one I had to meet, and gave him a gift to finish that quest too. Then I invested a good amount of my remaining money into another god summer spangle which I'll be giving to Caroline. A rainy day 3 meant I had more energy available to clear up the farm, but I did also go for a bit of foraging in the hopes of gathering enough to craft some wild seeds. I managed to make 20, and took advantage of the rain to plant them. I got a cutscene with Claire who was sleepy at work whilst on my way to say hello to Morris for the day. Then got an early night to conserve food to use in the mines. On day 4, a crow had stolen one of my precious parsnips. I went to replace it with a mixed seed, but misclicked and immediately destroyed it instead of watering it. 
Now that Pierre's was open, I could give Caroline that gold summer spangle, which meant I got her to a full heart already. Halfway to tea saplings. I actually ended up fishing for a while at a bubble spot up by the mountain lake, looking for a carp to give to Sophia. And on my way over to her, I got a cutscene with Andy saying he'd be sending me some strawberry seeds in the mail. Even more early strawberries. I handed over the carp to Sophia, then did a bit more fishing down at the beach. I know, can you believe it? Clint came to give me the furnace recipe on day 5 as I got my first piece of copper ore yesterday. I skipped that cutscene because we don't have time for Clint before collecting my strawberry seeds from the mail and harvesting my first parsnips. This got us level 1 farming! We got the community centre cutscene today, but we skipped that rubbish because it's going to make us a lovely warehouse. In a quick trip to Jojima, I bought a couple of each seed till my backpack got full, planting them in the space where the parsnips were. Then, it was time for my first day in the mines. It didn't take me all that long to reach level 10 where I received a wooden blade, but that's where I left it for the day because I forgot to bring a chest up here to store all of my loot. Instead, it was an evening of chopping loads of wood and popping up to the community centre to read the weird plaque so we can trigger the mail from the wizard. On day 6, I opened my first geode and started restoring the museum's stolen collection. I collected my first reward of cauliflower seeds, and later got the melon seeds too. I presented Morris with the spare earth crystal I had, then waited outside Caroline's room for her to leave so I could gift her a daffodil. I planted those cauliflowers and crafted my first scarecrows, then since it was a Saturday, I decided to go foraging, stopping in at the wizards on the way. Of course, we skipped that cutscene. Forest spirits, schmorris spirits. I found a decent amount of spring onions today, which will come in handy for the mines, then carried on through West Sendersap where I found a forest sword. This will be a huge upgrade. By the night time, I managed to make another 30 forage seeds, which I planted first thing on day 7. I went to the travelling cart for the first time and bought a large egg, but I honestly have no idea why I did that, because all I did was take it home to plonk it in a chest, and that is where it will live for the rest of these 100 days. I explored some of the caves and minecarts on my farm which eventually led me to a mineral cave where I could pick up geodes and museum pieces. It was Lewis's birthday today, so I gave him a farm fresh potato before locating Caroline to give her another daffodil. Day 8 was a good luck day, so I brought a chest to leave up by the mines ready for a day of spelunking. In my descent I also made sure to pick up any fibre I came across in prep for tea saplings and even got lucky enough to get my first ancient seed, which of course I had to make room for. I picked up two pairs of shoes which I had to decide between and ended up slipping on the sneakers, and in yet another stroke of good luck, I was blocked in by a huge amount of copper on floor 23. This had shaped up to be one of my best early game mining days, gaining 66 copper, 13 coal, 57 fibre and a bunch of other stuff, and I levelled up combat and mining. I got my first strawberries on day 9. It was so exciting to have these before the egg festival, but I did end up saving most of them until I could get preserves jars. I gave Caroline yet another daffodil, and had a quick chat with her as well. This got us so close to two hearts, so I'll be talking to her each day until we get there. Since I had some stuff to donate, I opened more geodes till I ran out of money, then took them straight to the museum on the long mission to free Gunther from behind his desk. We had a good few rewards, but most importantly, the ancient seed, which I shoved in the ground immediately. When it comes to wine, I'm usually team starfruit, but since we can't buy the seeds from Sandy, I'll be opting to use ancient fruit this time. The rest of the afternoon was spent in the mines to gather copper and to get deeper through the floors, and thankfully I made it to floor 40 by the end of the day. On day 10, Marnie greeted me with a cat to adopt, and named it Cola after a favourite beverage. The first lot of forage was ready, getting us enough XP for foraging level 3. From these, I could make 60 more forage seeds, replanting as many as would fit in the spaces. I didn't plant them all because I was sick of the watering. I dropped an earth crystal to Morris, then was at Clint's again for more geodes for the museum, and whilst I was there I gave Vincent a daffodil for his birthday. On day 11, Andy was at my door here to warn me about crows. I guess he didn't notice the scarecrows he would have walked past to get here? I grabbed Robin's lost axe which I gave straight back to her for the 250 gold reward. Then since it was a bad luck day, the afternoon was spent clearing more of the messy farm, but I did get around to making my first tree tappers in prep for bee houses and kegs. We hit level 2 farming from tulips that night. Yay sprinklers! On day 12, I went to say hello to Caroline and hit two hearts, which means we get the tea room cutscene. I'd never actually watched through this before, and let's just say it was, uh, an experience. With that nonsense out the way, this was to be a mining day as we needed lots of iron for all those sprinklers. I ducked out around 5pm as I was out of food and energy, with a modest amount of iron for now, but at least it was more than none. 
On day 13 we had our second harvest of strawberries, which was fun because this is usually the day I'd only just be planting them. We also got that tea sapling recipe in the mail, but I didn't make any yet because it's festival time. I used the opportunity to talk to everyone I could before starting their egg hunt. I felt ready to defeat Abigail, but to be honest, this egg hunt wasn't my best performance, especially compared to recently, but I still managed a decent 9 eggs, taking home that victory straw hat. Day 14 greeted us with our next batch of forageables, and again, I just replanted in the available spaces. This is the day I made my first tea saplings, crafting 34 of them before running out of resources. I also crafted my first sprinklers today, excited for any amount less watering. Then I went to check the travelling merchant who was selling some cheese. This was important for shipping, since I wasn't going to buy the milk pail from Marnie, I needed this for perfection. It was so expensive though. I dropped off a birthday daffodil to Haley on my way up to the mines as we were still on the sprinkler grind, and we were lucky enough to get our first coffee bean. Even though this was a pretty productive day, I passed out on floor 59. Spiral floors are the worst. On the bright side, we made 17 grand from those tea saplings, so now we're really getting going with the money making. On day 15, I gave Olivia a congratulatory topaz for making it another revolution around the sun. From there, I headed to Jojima and found some bargain sunflower seeds in the sale bin, taking them all to save for summer. This was a good day for Morris, he got a free earth crystal, and I did plan to buy the Jojima membership but forgot and left, triggering a Morris cutscene. He seemed in a particularly good mood, greeting all the townies, even stopping to wish Pierre well. Apparently, he was finally getting some recognition from his boss. Good for you, Morris. And I was about to make his day even better and buy the last membership needed to turn that dilapidated community centre into a wonderful Jojo warehouse. It was salmonberry season, but I ignored that for now and asked Clint to upgrade our pickaxe because the mines were becoming a pain. Then I suddenly remembered I needed to go home and plant that coffee bean. I foraged salmonberries into the night when I passed Morris who gave me a gold bar as an advanced discount on my next Jojo purchase. How kind! I sprinted home to grab an earth crystal as a thank you before he got on the bus, completely forgetting I already gave him one today. On day 16 I picked salmon berries on my way to the mines. I forgot I had no energy and exhausted myself in an artifact spot, getting that lost book cutscene to add insult to injury. Ugh. I dropped into the mines anyway with an aim of levelling up combat so we don't get an energy penalty tomorrow, but I was also here to find fibre 2 for those sweet sweet tea saplings, and that doesn't cost any energy. I successfully hit that level up before gratefully receiving my initiation into the Adventurers Guild. I also happened upon another ancient seed which I gave a new home on my farm. Then the rest of the day was spent gathering berries as we are constantly out of energy. We were blessed with some rain on day 17 as well as a pretty sizeable harvest of cauliflower, strawberries and forage. I replanted the forage once again and collected my copper pickaxe from Clint which I carried straight up to the mines to try and make more progress. Today I found my first diamond, and got through 10 floors to number 65 by midnight, deciding to take my leave since I wanted to save on medical bills. My morning workout on day 18 was chopping down loads of trees. Pam got a daffodil for her birthday, then I found out that Morris was having an irresistible 50% off sale at Jojomart. Apparently I was too stunned to pick myself up a coupon though. Hopefully I made Pierre feel better because today I bought the first backpack upgrade, being one of the few times he'd actually get my money. As soon as I came out of the shop, Andy was screaming the entire town down. In an attempt to be a good citizen, I agreed to check on Andy, so I stopped in at his house on my salmonberry rounds, but he wasn't home and I couldn't find him anywhere. I forgot about that for now to take advantage of the last day of salmonberries. On day 19, Jody asked me for a cauliflower, and being a Friday, we checked the travelling merchant who had literally nothing of interest. Like the cheese, I was also looking for one of each milk and the goat's cheese for shipping, so I'll be here every chance I get. I waited out in the rain for Jodie to unlock her door, and almost accidentally ate the goods, but luckily managed to give it to her for the 350 gold. I walked up to Robbins to ask for a coupe, then changed my mind, realising my money would be better spent on the minecarts at this point, even if I was still a few grand off. In that case, back to the mines because sprinklers. I left at floor 75 with plans to take home some of the loot I'd gotten because some of it would need donating to the museum. Shane got a salmon berry for his birthday on day 20, then it was yet another day in the mines, making our way up to the gold floors, where we got the shadow dagger, a decent upgrade, followed by an even better upgrade of the obsidian edge on floor 90. Even with that progress, I made it home with enough time to place more sprinklers, plant another coffee bean and make it to bed with mere seconds to spare. That night, we picked the minor profession, leveled up combat and made nearly no gold. 
However, to my surprise, that was still enough to get us over the threshold to have Demetrius set up our cave. Since I didn't need any fruit for the community centre, I went with the mushroom cave as a reliable energy source. It was another harvest day, look at all those goodies. We got a farming level too. With what I gathered, I can make another 33 tea saplings. So that's the minecart unlock secured for tomorrow, with plenty of money left over for some kind of expensive milk from the travelling merchant, and then I bet you can guess what I did for the rest of the day. If you guess mining, you are correct. It took quite a bit to get to floor 99, but it wasn't long before I got fed up with the spiral floor and plopped down the staircase to secure our first star drop. Ah yes, the sweet sweet taste of Jojo Corp. I made it all the way to floor 110, receiving a sword that's actually worse. I guess I'll just sell it. From this day's levels, I unlocked the preserves jar, chose the gatherer profession, and unlocked the bomb recipe. On day 22, I got a free green bean from the community garden from Leah, which I ate and apparently regurgitated whole. I was going to give it to Morris, but that would be gross, so he got a salmon berry instead. As soon as Joe Jamar opened, I checked the clearance bin and picked up spring seeds for some extra tea sapling profit, then spent 15,000 gold on the minecarts. The rest of this day was spent in the mines for the... I've lost count of how many days I've been doing this now, but I promise at some point we do do other stuff. For now, I just needed the ores for sprinklers and fibre for tea saplings. I passed out right by the farm, dreaming of the sounds of the minecarts being fixed. And having reached level 5 combat, I picked the fighter profession. First thing on day 23, I handed in a copper gathering quest to Clint, and got him to open some geodes. We got a good amount of stuff to donate to the museum on our quest to free Gunther, and he seemed grateful for our efforts, handing us a few rewards. I then near bankrupted myself for the final backpack upgrade. This loot goblin cannot be stopped. I popped off home to fill my house with those museum rewards, made another 20 tea saplings to sell, then hung out on the farm to make enough sprinklers to mostly not have to water stuff anymore. I wanted to work on friendship with the wizard, so I went to see how he's doing, but he gave us the saddest dialogue for us having chosen the Joja route. I took that as my cue to leave. We had a bit better luck with Andy, who gladly accepted a salmon berry for his birthday. On day 24, I picked my last set of forage and chopped down trees whilst waiting for the flower dance to start. As soon as it did, I bought the tub of flowers recipe and the rare crow as I needed them for perfection. I made sure to speak to everyone for the friendship points, then received the official initiation of every Stardew save. The humiliation of being rejected for the flower dance. In my case, from more than one person. <sighs> no squats for us this year. On day 25, I grabbed my last set of strawberries for the year, then spent the entire morning clearing land for resources and to tidy things up. That afternoon, I visited Clint to request a steel pickaxe upgrade, and shared some spare copper with Sophia for a town board quest, mainly for the friendship boost. Back on the farm, I thought it was time to start adding paths, and don't worry, that tree will be moved at some point. I decided on this save, I wanted to try decorating as I go. Day 26 was when I finally remembered to make my first preserves jars, although I still seem to have forgotten to actually make any jelly. I picked up a rare seed to save for fall, then gave a yet another daffodil as a birthday gift, which seems to be a theme this spring. I stole some tea leaves from Caroline to ship, then planned to fish for the rest of the day as I was close to level 2. I was happy to see this bubble spot, but it disappeared shortly after I cast my line. It only took me a few minutes to get bored of fishing, so I left to donate a couple more artefacts that I found that day. My rare trip to the beach reminded me I hadn't repaired that bridge yet, so I took care of that for access to more pocket money and foraging XP. On day 27, I foraged on the beach until Clint's opened so that I could pick up my steel pickaxe. Emily and Haley were arguing over their house chores, so I suggested that this be Haley's one weekly job. It is Emily's birthday after all, and this seems to have settled things for now. After that bit of drama, Emily retreated to her room, so I had to wait outside for a while to give her a birthday gift. I went for my last bit of spring foraging, hitting level 6 that day, and collecting any fibre I could find in West Cindersap, then rounded off the day by chugging a beer with Shane on my way home. On day 28, the travelling merchant had a battery which I couldn't pass up. It was a decently lucky day, so I planned to spend the rest of the day in the mines gathering as many ores as I could for more sprinklers, amongst other important things. The best part of this day though was getting a prismatic shard from a dust sprite. What the? I was in shock for a while, this is the earliest I've ever got one. I then rushed back that night to play seven more sprinklers I just made in prep for the new season. Day 29, the first day of summer. I spent ages hoeing the ground whilst waiting for Jojamar to open. 
On my way into town, I got a cutscene with Demetrius, asking if I know where Stardew Valley got its name. So I just guessed space stuff, and that was correct. I also picked up a copper axe I asked Clint for a couple of days ago, but with all that socialising done, it was seed time. My brain was saying no today because I missed strawberry seeds for one gold again. I think I was too focused on picking up a gift for Morris. I could have saved these for next year. Well, instead, I end up going with a couple of each crop and loads of melons and blueberries, then popped off home to get them all in the ground. I might have bit enough more than I can chew though because all those sprinkler spots filled up fast. This is what I get for not calculating things. I'll be needing to water all of these melons by hand every day until I hit farming level 6. On day 30, I really messed up. On this day, I donated a bunch of things to the museum, including my first prismatic shard. If you didn't know, this first one should have been saved to take to the desert and get the galaxy sword. You see, what happened is that I already tried to record this series once before. I'd done up to day 20, but between Dinkum and the release of Coral Island, I decided I was going to restart my playthrough and deleted all those recordings. I didn't delete the save though, and after all those other videos were done, I forgot I made that decision and carried on with the old save, playing all the way up to day 71 before realising I deleted the footage. This meant I had to start everything all over again, and of course by that point on there I'd already got the galaxy sword, so I thought it was safe to donate this prismatic shard. Yeah, uh, oops. <laughs> Clearly my absolute blunder was coming back to haunt me, and it's going to be some time before I realise my mistake. Blissfully unaware, I spent the rest of the day in the mines. On day 31, Susan was finally free so she came to introduce herself. After an uncomfortable amount of watering, I chopped a bunch of farm wood, then got a cutscene with the wizard, where I got caught checking out his books. This must have been a dream or something because nobody would catch me reading anything. He did say he might teach us magic later though, so that was kinda cool. On day 32, I cleared some space which will later be used for a tapper farm. I got a cutscene where Lewis was questioning Morris about Joja's practices, and he reminded him that everything Joja are doing are in compliance with the law. It's all fine! I asked Clint to upgrade my axe, then track down the birthday girl with a ruby, keeping up with gifting of many other townies too. After all the gifting, I went home to plant the acorns that I had in prep for oak resin for kegs. On day 33, the travelling merchant was selling nothing but disappointment. With the shorts quest now on our radar, I gave Marnie a diamond, then did her a favour by returning a lost jazz from the woods. I decided it was finally time for a fishing rod upgrade, and actually used it to fish for a while hanging out at this fishing spot. Unfortunately, it disappeared kinda quickly, so I left to find out that Emily was in need of Joja Cola. Of course, we were happy to share the deliciousness that is Joja Cola, so I bought a couple, cause you know, one for me too. Then, the evening was spent farming fibre in the mines. I gave Martin some jelly for his birthday which was on day 34. I took advantage of a bubble spot since I actually had my rod with me, but all the fish were too hard and the bubbles went away so I trashed that idea and grabbed my axe from Clint. I took it straight home to clear this little patch to set up my storage area. For now, I just floored it because I remembered there was a path blocked by hardwood on my farm. This led to my own personal hot spring which I was very excited about because I am constantly out of energy. This area also had a shortcut to the secret woods. Handy. I now had access to the hardwood, forageable and crop seeds that these woods had to offer, and all that fun stuff meant we reached level 7 foraging. It was also a decent money day, having made a good amount of tea saplings. On day 35, I carried on setting up my storage area because my chests were getting so messy. I didn't forget to check the travelling merchant, but apparently she forgot to bring anything actually good. This was a mines evening, spent predominantly farming coal. This was also the day I realised about the mistake with the prismatic shard. Oh, I'm an idiot. I left the mines at midnight to avoid the pass out penalty, having only gathered 17 coal. On day 36, I got a cashback mail from Pierre. Has he, like, not noticed I'm not shopping there? Flowers were starting to grow, so I made my first bee houses. Then of course, as we went into town, we had to pet Dusty. We gave out a few gifts today. I gave a sweet pea to Morris, then bought a few tulips to give to some other people. I gave Sophia a bit of a fright, but then she gave me my first quality sprinkler, so I think we're good. Sophia actually sells sprinklers too, but we won't be allowed to buy them for this playthrough. I also met her friend Scarlet for the first time, but she seemed upset that I might have overheard some of the conversation, so I told her I heard nothing and gave her a tulip to cheer her up. Gus got one of my two diamonds for his birthday, then it was another evening in the mines farming for coal, and to chip away at that monster slayer goal. 
On day 37, I got round to the last bit of clear up on this field, and made some progress on some other parts of this massive farm too, meaning we gathered a decent amount of wood. On day 38, I gave Maru a strawberry for her birthday, and I gotta say, I think I'm doing pretty well with keeping up with all these birthdays. Lewis hired Clint to remove the boulder by the train station, but obviously, it'll be us who does the dirty work. This explosive is going to take coal and iridium, but we don't have access to the desert yet, so that'll be our next big goal. From the couple of crops I harvested that day, I reached farming level 5, choosing the tiller profession, and made a little bit of gold from tea saplings. I got some melon seeds in the mail on day 39, but I decided to wait to plant these for now because I had more than enough watering. This was the day of the luau. I plopped in a gold quality purple mushroom to the pot that made a soup which was so good that the governor literally started vibrating. That soup was out of this world, although it's got mushrooms in it so I'll have to disagree. On day 40 we got our first storm forecast, so I crafted some lightning rods for batteries and for less likelihood that my crops get destroyed. I got that weird cutscene from Maru and Demetrius, but to keep hold of my friendship points I just said nothing. The reason I came up to Robins was that I was going to ask for the house upgrade, but then thought better of it because I suddenly remembered I was saving up for the bus and we were so close to that goal now. To help with this, I went foraging at the beach and west in the sap. On day 41, my first batch of melons were ready. This was enough to get me level 6 farming, quality sprinklers were in sight and I was so relieved. Actually, we also got level 7 farming too. I sold all the silver ones and most of the gold ones, with all the regular ones to be safe for jelly. I cleared out the mineral cave with plans to open my geodes, then I even tried to steal back my prismatic shard from the museum, but of course that didn't work. I donated enough stuff this day to be given one of the rare crows, then because it was Alex's birthday I gave him a frozen tear, which given that it was raining was probably kind of mean. I filled up some of the open spots with forage seeds, then jumped back into the mines for coal once again. I was greeted with the beautiful sight of blueberries on day 42, and the few forageables that were ready were enough to get level 7 foraging. As before, I shipped the quality ones and kept the basic ones for processing and gifts, before collecting my first set of batteries. As I'd been preparing the materials in advance, I had enough to make 16 sprinklers with more on the way. I headed to Joja Mart for seeds to fill out these spots, and came across Pam being an absolute Karen. Oh, and most importantly, I was here to pay for the bus repair, Skull Caverns is so close I can taste it. I burned through the rest of my gold on another set of melons, and after collecting some free resources from a passing train, I worked into the night getting all those seeds planted. On day 43, I badgered Pam to hurry up to the bus for my first day in Skull Caverns. I made use of the desert trader given she was after items and not money. Then I unlocked that door and got going. This was shaping up to be an incredible first day. I picked up some yam seeds from my first treasure floor, a serpent spat out a rabbit's foot, then on an infested day 59 I got overwhelmed and died. Thankfully, because it was a good luck day, I only lost a thousand gold and not a single item. It was also pretty late by then, so we didn't really lose that much time either. On day 44 I got a mail from Mr Key, challenging me to get to floor 25 in Skull Caverns. Ah Mr Key, if you were as all seeing and knowing that we here you are, you'd have known I've already done this. I was having some pretty decent luck on the save, but we could always use more, so I took my rabbit's foot over to the Joja truck guy, only for him to not even acknowledge my existence. I guess we'll have to wait for the secret note. I dropped off the bomb materials to Clint, grateful that he shared with me some of his earnings, then returned to the desert, not for Skull Caverns, but to trade more stuff in prep for future runs, but also to go foraging whilst I was there, and to meet Sandy for the first time, even if we can't shop here. On day 45 I got a 10,000 gold reward for that progress in Skull Caverns. It was Sam's birthday, but since I can't get into his room yet, I spent a good portion of the day in the mines farming fibre. As I was leaving that afternoon, I got a cutscene with Marlon who wanted to introduce me to Krobus down in the sewers, entrusting me with my very own key so I can go and see them whenever I like. Sam was now in the saloon, but before I could hand over my gift, I had to hint at Pam to pay off her bar tab. Even though she seemed mad at first, thankfully she obliged. Then we decided to help Claire pay for our lunch. She works hard and deserves the salad she wants. With all those cutscenes out the way, I could give Sam his cactus fruit from the desert. He seemed to still be tired after repairing the bus that night, which we were very grateful for. But that's enough socialising for today, back to fibre farming. I made it home in time for bed, but it seems Clint was hellbent on awakening the entire town. 
Emily was here bright and early on day 46 to give me access to her sewing machine. This was a blueberry harvest day, enough to bring us to level 8 farming. Kegs are imminent. Now that my trees were starting to grow, I decorated the tapper farm a little with some fences and paths, then began clearing out this little area with plans to house my kegs here. On day 47 I made my first 5 kegs, but kept them closed for now because… lazy. It was Demetrius's birthday so he got a strawberry. No idea how that hasn't gone mouldy yet. Or maybe it has, who knows. I bumped into a sad Sophia outside the doctor's office, so I asked if she wanted to pet Dusty with me, which seemed to help cheer her up, and it made the doggo happy too. The Joja clearance bin had some nice early fibre seeds for cheap. We could always do it more fibre. I also bought the winter seeds, but immediately regretted it when I realised that it took me below 35,000 gold, which was the amount I needed to pay for the greenhouse repair, so I sprinted over to Pierre's to sell back enough stuff to get that amount. Hello Morris, one greenhouse please. Back on the farm with a meagre 2 gold, I crafted some tea saplings to ship, then set off my first cups of coffee since I forgot earlier. I had a decent forage harvest on day 48. I turned as much as I could into seeds, replanting them in the available space then making 21 tea saplings before running out of fibre again. Being a good luck day, it would have been rude not to have gone to Skull Caverns, with a pretty early treasure floor containing some rain totems. And the first dino I killed dropped us an egg. I passed out on floor 75, hitting level 9 mining and making over 10 grand mainly from tea saplings. On day 49 I put away all of yesterday's goodies, then since it was another pretty good luck day I was back at it again. The reason I was going so hard in here was because I needed loads of iridium for upgrades and sprinklers, and because I was desperately looking for another prismatic shard, which thankfully I found that night. I wasn't taking any chances this time, and before I could figure I headed straight to the spot to get that galaxy sword. Since I still had a little bit of time, I refilled some supplies at the desert trader, then headed to bed so I could pick the blacksmith profession. Our halfway point began with a satisfying blueberry harvest. We dropped a melon to Demetrius to help with his research, then it was off to Jojima where Morris was getting some attitude from his employees. I told them they should listen to him. They were not best pleased but it was Morris's friendship that we're most interested in, and he seemed to be thankful for my assistance. What I actually came here for was the bridge repair. We've only got one project left now. Believe it or not, I spent the afternoon celebrating with some fishing, sticking around the lake till I hit level 4. I left to check out the summit because I completely forgot till now, picking up any forage the place had to offer. On day 51 I met Pam at work with some pale ale. Since she drank it right away, we won't be taking the bus today. I added some tappers to my resin farm, then cleared this log which led down to a path to something like my own secret woods with renewable hardwood and a surprise giant crop. I harvested that melon for the extra cash. I chopped as much hardwood as I could today to grind out foraging levels. I had a goal now of hitting level 10 foraging before blackberry season starts, because iridium quality blackberries are actually pretty decent. All the fibre from farm clearance meant we could make another 29 tea saplings, so we went to bed that night with a lovely 15,000 gold. On day 52 I finally came back for that house upgrade. It was time we got more space for activities. I headed down the pier in the pouring rain to visit Willy and give him an iridium bar for his birthday, then strolled right into Jojima around lunchtime to buy that last bundle. I am so pleased with the result of completing the Joja route before the end of summer. Filled with confidence, I spent the rest of the day smacking dust sprites. On day 53, George was asking for a hot pepper to rub on his knee. I did the rounds saying hello to my fellow farmers, then as I arrived at George's house I jumped on the opportunity of this bubble spot first. I soon realised George wouldn't appreciate waiting, so I went inside to hand him the pepper and came out to resume fishing. The bubble spot finally disappeared in the evening with just enough time for me to hit level 5 fishing. George actually reminded me to check out the quarry, but when I took the car over there I was met with a copper pan cutscene. I skipped this one too because I've seen it a million times now so that I could start clearing out the quarry. On day 54 I harvested my crops as quick as possible to stop them from getting too soggy, but what was really satisfying was slicing through all that fibre. I bought a load of radishes to sacrifice for holding the sprinkler spots for full, meaning I can save time and energy on hoeing and watering for the start of next season. Overnight, we gained access to crafting the seed maker and iridium sprinklers, and we made a decent profit from all them crops. Day 55 and my house was now upgraded, both in size and in looks. I also set up my first iridium sprinklers in prep for next season, then made the most of my last foraging Saturday of summer, also stopping to give gifts along the way. On day 56 I remembered to move my bed back closer to the door. Also don't you just love the more Joja-esque interior? 
The travelling merchant had a decently priced seafoam pudding, which I bought on my way to the secret woods to grind for more foraging XP. I took a lunchtime dip in my hot springs because this was better than food. Then finally added my first sprinkler to the greenhouse, having completely forgotten that this farm map comes with one that's so much bigger. I'd been forgetting about the Joe de Clearance bin. Good thing I checked today because there were free strawberry seeds. Huh? I was so confused at first. I thought it was just a visual bug and the price wasn't showing, but nope, definitely free. I'll be taking them, thank you very much. I also grabbed the apple sapling because fruit trees do seem to be cheaper there, and of course it got planted in my greenhouse. I do love that this one has specific spots for the fruit trees. Looks like I missed this prompt for the festival, so I headed to bed completely forgetting about the moonlight jellies. On day 57, I tidied up withered crops whilst waiting for Jojamart to open. Similar to summer, I bought a few of each crop, then a good quantity of cranberries and a buttload of pumpkins. I had a few too many pumpkin seeds for my sprinklers, so I saved these for now, then continued with the mammoth task of clearing up this farm. On day 58, I picked a single ancient fruit to turn into seeds for the greenhouse. I made 10 more kegs and started filling up this area, but I'll wait for the other kegs to finish processing before I start anything new here. The special orders board was now fixed, so I went to pick out my first quest. Since I didn't have any chickens, I had to go with rock rejuvenation. Vincent caught me digging through the trash. Hopefully he didn't tell Penny because I was here to hand her a birthday gift. On my way out of the library, I witnessed Penny push George out of the way, and even though she was trying to help, I told her she really should have asked first. I jumped on some free mech seeds in the clearance bin today, then interrupt the exercise class to dump rocks on Emily because I wanted this request done nice and early. The rest of the day went on handing out coffee because I was trying to keep up effort with the friendships. This meant I could now retrieve Lewis's shorts. I stored them in a chest at home for now to decide how to present them to him later. Lastly, I finally remembered I didn't yet have the golden scythe, so I took a trip to the quarry mines to rectify that, and on my return home I got that cutscene with Linus. Gross. On day 59, I got a Best Neighbour award, as well as the sewing machine in the mail, and Marnie was asking for some amaranth. I threw down the sewing machine in the spare room of the house so I could take the minecart to Clint's and open all of my geodes, since Gunther is still trapped behind that desk. I got quite a few things to donate, but forgot to collect any rewards. That's alright though, because the trash blessed me with a beverage. The sale bin was selling fibre seeds again. I'll take any fibre I can get, with a bonus that they don't need watering. I asked Robin for a coop today since I could gather these animal drops without buying tools from Marnie, then chop wood through the evening, chipping away at the foraging level. Day 60 started with setting off some more pale ale and adding another fruit worth of seeds to my greenhouse. My crop is growing slowly but surely. This entire day was for working on my foraging level because blackberry season was coming up soon. That night we got a visit from Angelica, which meant on day 61 I could already harvest some sweet gem berries. And some other things too, but those or whatever, but it did mean I could fill these spots with those spare pumpkins. Marnie got the amaranth she requested, then as I was coming through town to find Elliot for his birthday, I finally got that cutscene for completing the Jojo route. Bearing in mind we finished the last project like 9 days ago. I stopped Morris from being fired and received an exclusive Jojo Cola vending machine, a daily supply of our favourite fizzy? We can't say no to that. I was also thankful it wasn't raining today, because that meant I could actually give Elliot his birthday gift. My soda machine got its rightful place in my kitchen, then it was back on the foraging level grind. We are so close now. On day 62 I dumped a cave carrot on Marnie's floor, then it was on to Willy's to drop off the boat materials because I was itching to get to Ginger Island. I brought Pierre some coffee, slightly out of guilt, and he questioned me about my funding of Joja's projects. I did feel kinda bad, but I was loyal to Joja, at least for this playthrough anyway. This was the day I hit level 10 foraging, with a couple of days to spare before blackberry season, so with the botanist profession they'll all be iridium quality. On day 63 I made some iridium sprinklers to take to Ginger Island. It took me till the afternoon to actually get to the island because I had to take several trips back to the farm to collect forgotten tools. We made it eventually though, and thus began the race to get as many golden walnuts as possible. I also collected all the fibre here and got a nice early mummified frog. I gave my first walnut to the parrot, getting squawked at from a child in response. Then I ran around the island for the day picking up all of the easy ones. It wasn't long before I could unlock the west side of the island and grab the warm memento whilst I was there, even though we can't do this till Kent arrives year 2. 
By the evening, I gathered enough walnuts to gain access to the farmhouse, and before getting some sleep, I managed to set up my first island crops using the secret wood seeds and mix seeds. I headed back to town early on day 64 because it was blackberry season and I wanted as many other things as possible. As I passed the town board, I accepted Robin's resource rush because we were always in need of wood and getting paid for this is a win-win. It was a good thing I came back early today because I could set off some melon wine and the first cranberries were ready to harvest. It was Claire's birthday, so I surprised her at work with her favourite flower, then got to see her enjoying some reading on her break. On my blackberry travels, the wizard asked me to help retrieve his magic ink, then all that foraging reminded me I should probably return Linus's berry basket to him. My first day of berry picking ended with 48 blackberries, which isn't great. Let's hope we do better in the next few days. But on the bright side, we hit level 10 farming, which means we could pick the artisan profession. We got a decent amount of gold too. On day 65, I had two Joja Colas for breakfast, thanks to my vending machine. I decided to hit two birds with one stone today, chopping wood in Cinderset Forest for Robin's resource rush, and collecting any berries I passed. It took me a good portion of the day to finish that quest. Then whilst I was down here, I popped into the sewers to gain access to the mutant bug lair, buy the star drop from Krobus, and collect the dark talisman. On day 66, Robin sent me the recipe for the stone chest, which I'll forget about immediately. This was another day of berry picking. I was determined to have a good stock, but I did also hand out coffees to everyone I passed. Claire seemed to be interested in the weekly aerobics class. Hopefully we can give her some encouragement. And hey, it seems to have worked. Before getting any animals, I wanted to have a silo to store hay, which is the perfect time to admire our beautiful coop. Another focused evening of berry picking and we now had almost 200, feeling a bit more successful now. My skull cabin's yams came to fruition on day 67, and I opted to replace these with full forage this time. It was also a fibre day too. Sam asked me what kind of music their band should make, and this time I chose the high energy dance music. He was also about to feed me a raw egg, but thankfully he dropped it on the floor. I took the blame as well because friendship points. My silo was about to be done, so I bought my first two chickens, one named Rocky and the other named Ginger. Speaking of Ginger, it was raining on Ginger Island today, so I took the boat to try and do that gem puzzle, but forgot to bring a ruby, so we weren't successful today, though it also didn't help that I'd lose track and try the same combination more than once. I decided I was done with hunting blackberries, so I spent the rest of this day exploring the volcano, mainly looking for golden walnuts. Having started this quite late in the day, I didn't quite make it to the top, passing out on floor 7. Waking up on the island farm the next day reminded me I should probably be clearing up this land. I managed to do that singing stone puzzle on my second attempt which is a huge improvement from last time, meaning I could fix the bridge to the dig site and free Professor Snail for the chance at getting even more walnuts. I collected all the ones out in the open here, then donated the fossils I had and reported a total of 22 purple flowers on the island for a few more walnuts. I was back in town with enough time to check the travelling merchant, and I'm glad I did because I couldn't pass up the adorable Warflower Pal. I think it goes perfectly in this Joja themed house. Day 69 was another cranberry harvest. I visited the coop to pet the chicks and admire the interior, which reminded me I really needed to fill up that silo. I made sure to withdraw the hay when it was full so I could carry on collecting too. Abigail was hanging out at the bus stop for her birthday, with an easy reach to gift her an amethyst. I got a cutscene with Elliot when I stopped by the saloon. I didn't appreciate that he assumed I like wine, it's definitely not my thing. But even so, I proposed a toast to our friendship. You see that glow? A glow of disgust. I was feeling kinda nauseous, but that didn't stop me from learning all the recipes here, nor did it stop me picking up more free mix seeds. Even though it was gloomy on day 70, I couldn't contain my excitement at the spectacular sight of all those pumpkins. I sold all the quality ones and kept the rest for pickles. Since it was a Sunday, Ham drove me to the desert to trade jades for staircases, and whilst I was there I left no forage behind. By the afternoon, I was ready for my next purchase of pumpkin seeds, and after requesting a coop upgrade, I toddled off home to replant. I did have to make a second trip to buy more though because I miscalculated how many I'd need. Jody was at my door on day 71, asking me to bring a largemouth bass for dinner with them. We'll take care of that, but probably not today. Since I had enough money to buy more crops, I set up a new area with some scarecrows and iridium sprinklers. The clearance bin had a pomegranate sapling for sale, then I spoke to Claire to buy more pumpkin seeds for the new field, which took until the night time to finish planting and watering, though I did save enough time to fill my inventory with items for the fair tomorrow. 
On day 72, I made more tapas whilst waiting for the fair to start before proudly displaying a variety of goods which were enough to destroy the entire town. Everyone swears by this stupid wheel, so I bet some of my tokens on green, only to lose as usual. I spent an absurd amount of time on the fishing game till I got almost all the tokens I needed, then made one last 100 token bet, and I actually won this time. At the festival shop, I picked up the star drop and the rare crow. A very successful first fair, I think. Day 73 and my coop was upgraded, so I got started with hatching that dino egg. I also harvested my first chicken eggs, so it was time to make a couple of mayo machines. This was the day I decided to tackle the magic ink, so I approached the witch's hut with a chest and my fishing rod. As long as the henchmen are still guarding, you can catch void mayo from the water here, as many as you want, as long as you don't keep them in your inventory. So I put the first one in a chest to be able to catch a second, one for the henchmen and one to ship. That got our green fella out of the way, so I grabbed that ink and walked to the wizards. Now we have access to build more fun stuff and move buildings too. I stepped out into the woods where I sensed a new path had opened up. This was Sprite Spring, where I met Klaus and Angelica. They were forest spirits who, thankfully, didn't hold a grudge with us for choosing the Joja route. I took a quick dip in the water to duck into the secret cave and grab all the valuables there, and there are some goodies on the other side too. I also checked out Aurora Vineyard to find literally nothing of interest, then accepted a new favour from the wizard to pick up some prismatic jelly. I was excited to see this request quite early because we needed Monster Must to help us get the burglar ring. For my final win of the day, the clearance bin was selling fibre seeds again, as well as a cheaper peach sapling. On day 74 I had a lovely varied harvest, and any empty spots were filled with forage seeds. I caught Marnie on her way out with a birthday diamond, then wasted no time in heading to the mines to find that prismatic slime. I was there all day, resetting through the floors till finally, at 1.40am. Oh thank god. <laughs> that was one heck of a stroke of luck. I celebrated the next morning with a breakfast of Joja Cola, then on my way to the wizard bright and early I picked up the winter rare crow from the travelling merchant. I had the wizard a gift, then left, completely forgetting what I came in for. It wasn't long before I realised though, obviously getting shooed away once you got what you needed. I wanted to give Caroline the pumpkin she asked for, but before I could, Abigail asked me to join her for some gaming. I still find Journey of the Prairie King ridiculously hard, but for the first time ever, I got through this level. Abigail thought it was fun. I thought it was so stressful. I handed Caroline the pumpkin and went on my way. That afternoon, I decided to head to Ginger Island. I'd be carrying around a wheat seed for days and it was time I finally got it planted in prep for the cave rock. I had loads of mixed seeds and taro, so it was a good time to plant those too. On day 76, I had a bunch of ancient fibre to harvest and out popped some golden walnuts. It was a good luck day today and I was ready to tackle this volcano once and for all. I blew up this great cluster of cinder shards and got a couple of walnuts along the way. Then thankfully, around 6pm, I made it to the top. And here, we got to meet Lance. He gave us a little bit of info on the forge, then slowly just kinda disappeared. Anyway, I grabbed that free prismatic shard along with two easy golden walnuts and headed out for the day to donate fossil to Professor Snail. I also completed the last question of his survey for even more walnuts. This gave me just enough to be able to restore the beach resort and therefore gaining access to a new part of the beach, along with the Pirate's Cove. I won all three rounds of darts, so that's three more walnuts there. Then as I got back to the farm, I realised the melons were ready, so I came to show the frog, who made me a little uncomfortable. On day 77, I replaced some of the mixed seed crops with pineapple seeds. When I got back home, Morris was there to greet me and let me know about Joja Day, which will be every 22nd of the month. This gives us 20% off seeds till 8pm. Given that he now sells all the seeds all year round, this was a huge deal. One I'll immediately forget about. I refilled my kegs with a new batch of wine before coming up to the mountain to give Robin a sunflower for her birthday. I trekked all the way back down again to check the travelling merchant, who was as useless as ever. But it wasn't a completely fruitless trip because we did manage to stop in at the wizards to give him a purple mushroom. Lance was waiting on my doorstep the morning of day 78. He was here to give me his schedule, which will help in trying to befriend him. I wasn't joking when I said I immediately forgot about the Joja sale. Nope. Instead, I spent the entire day farming dust sprites, for coal and for the burglar ring. Of course, with a healthy dose of monster musk. I passed out for the day annoyingly close to my goal. I was literally less than 10 away. On day 79, I gathered some kind of damp cranberries. Why does all the rain have to come after I have sprinklers? The only other thing I actually did this day was chop wood on my farm. 
On day 80, I bought a duck who I named Daisy. Demetrius was hogging the entire special orders board, so I went with biome balance because it seems like the easier option of the two. Then I felt it was about time I got my pickaxe upgraded to gold. When I went to give George a birthday gift, I walked into a little doctor's visit. He seemed pretty irritated, but I told him it would be a good idea to listen to Harvey. He begrudgingly agreed. Harvey is just trying to help after all. That's okay though, because I cheered him up with a leak. I successfully helped Murray with her math problems with some educated guesses, then asked Robin to upgrade my coop a final time so we can get lots of rabbits. We need them feet. Now I was up by the lake, I could begin the biome balance quest, catching half the fish tonight and saving the rest to do the next day. But first, we got our final forage harvest to deal with. I was so relieved to have the fish quest done by lunchtime. We all know how I feel about fishing. I checked the monster slayer board to see I only needed two more dust rows. Told you I was close. I dropped everything to smack down a final pair and collect that burglar ring, a true loot goblin essential. I then returned to the mines because I didn't have enough solar essence to make an iridium band to replace the magnet ring and the glow ring I was wearing. As soon as I got my 50 of solar essence, I crafted that ring so I could enjoy the new loadout. This all made me very hungry, so I decided to take Jody up on her offer of dinner if I bring a largemouth bass. Of course, the first thing I did was dump it on the floor. I do hope these floors are clean, although they definitely aren't now. That delicious meal took a total of zero minutes, so I made use of the rest of the time with farm clearance. On day 82, I waited outside Clint's till he opened because I was excited to pick up my new gold pickaxe. After picking up the beach freebies, I hopped on the boat to Ginger Island because it was raining again. First, I checked on the farm which had a bunch of crops ready to go, including the wheat, so I showed the creepy frog who wanted to tickle me. Thanks for the walnuts, but I'll be on my way. Lance got a gift of some green tea. Then, since I forgot to bring one, I hunted down a ruby in the volcano. I confused myself again with the gem puzzle, so I decided to leave it for now till I could get another clue, since I already forgot the first one. The morning of day 83, I hurried back to the farm because the next batch of pumpkins were ready. One more lot tomorrow and we'll be done with fall. Given the day, I didn't replant anything. Instead, going for the maze in the secret woods to get the star drop from Old Master Cannoli. Not sure why I hadn't done it yet, since I've had the sweet gem berry since day 62. I took some monster musk to the mines to gather more coal, then it was time for my second maze of the day. This one did take me a while, but I did eventually manage to grab that golden pumpkin, then left with the rare crow since we'll need it for perfection. On day 84, I replaced the wine with pumpkin juice since I ran out of melons and I don't have enough ancient fruit yet. I dealt with my last harvest of the season and did my routine check of the travelling merchant. This time, she had some chocolate cake, which was useful since this will be a love gift for Susan's birthday. I stopped in at Robin's who gave me the recipe for the flute block and the drum blocks. We'll be needing this for more golden walnuts. I opened some coconuts and some geodes at Clint's, some for loot and some for museum donations. Don't worry Gunther, you'll be out of there soon. I got several rewards today, including a free flute block, so we have one less to craft now. I tracked down Susan to give her her cake and stopped in to Jojo Mart with gifts too. Back on the farm, I found the beautiful sight of ancient fruit in my greenhouse, so the evening went on turning them into seeds to expand my crop. Day 85 and I was relieved to see Gunther at my door. He'd escaped that museum desk and now will also roam the town. He came to let me know that I'd be receiving a portion of the museum's funding for all my contributions. I went to check on the animals and completely forgot about that dino egg, so now we had a new lizard to name. This one will be called Kermit. Coming in here also reminded me that I can't buy a radiator, so we'll only be getting small chicken eggs for a while. Krobus was out in the open, so I chased them to the playground and they gave me the magnifying glass so I can now find secret notes. A new week means new special orders, and obviously we went for community cleanup to get those fibre seeds. I felt kinda bad for scaring Krobus on the birthday, but I think I made it up to them with the gift of wild horseradish. I've noticed something I tend to do is hand out gifts to everyone on someone's birthday. It's like a reminder to work on those friendships. Then, the rest of the day was spent fishing for trash, but annoyingly, I kept catching fish. I even tried the desert and the farm. The next morning, I got a mail from Gunther containing 40,000 gold. That must have been some donation the museum received. I also received some gifts and recipes, and a challenge from Willy to catch a squid. It was another rainy day on Ginger Island and I was armed with my flute blocks to complete that mermaid puzzle. Thank you for the walnuts. Thanks to those walnuts, I could now unlock the desert trader. I also managed to guess my way through the gem puzzle. Funnily enough, I never even needed the ruby.
The rest of this night was spent fishing for trash, but I did get a good few walnuts. Whilst I was asleep that night, the witch came by and left me a gift. That will have to wait though, because I was still on the island with only seven walnuts left to open Key's secret room. I spent some time at the dig site today, fishing for trash and walnuts, and waiting for panning spots. No lucky ring today though. I came back to town to open more coconuts, getting a lovely new hat and the fossilized skull I needed. I put the new hat on right away, then went on a bit of a gifting spree, including Linus, whose birthday it was, and he became our very first best friend. Back on the farm, I picked up the void egg and incubated it for an unlimited supply. Then after a few days of trying, I'd gathered enough trash to complete the community cleanup at 1.40 in the morning. On day 88, Linus mailed me the fish taco recipe, as well as one for fibre seeds and a gift of fried calamari. I was excited to end my perpetual fibre shortage, crafting over 200 fibre seeds which I hastened to plant, doing them by the sprinklers so I'd have the option to hold the spots till spring if I wanted to. On day 89, I bought some more cheese from the travelling merchant to keep hold of for cooking. Linus was taking a dip in the freezing cold. I could never, that's what the bathhouse is for. I asked Robin to build me a barn, but sadly, I couldn't find a mod with a Jojo exterior, so if you know one, please do let me know in the comments. The same goes for the silo too. As I came out of Robin's, she offered Linus some food, but he was already satisfied from a good day of foraging. Here, I had the option to ask him to move on to the farm, but of course I just said that I'm pleased that he's doing well. Much to his relief, this is the way of life he's happy with. Even though it wasn't a good luck day and it was already the afternoon, I opted to spend the rest of this one in Skull Caverns as I was getting withdrawals. I passed out on floor 41, which wasn't bad for half an unplanned day, waking up the next morning with an amount of loot that I can't be mad about. I got quite a few secret notes on that trip, but the most exciting one was the Joja truck guy. I can finally get that special charm for a permanent luck boost. Later that day, I ran into Morris overseeing a shipment of materials to the warehouse. Sounds like Morris had some big plans for Stardew Valley, and I was excited to see them unfold. It seems that through our friendship, he was beginning to understand the importance of this community, and now it was his time to help and redeem himself. He really does seem like a completely new person now. Clint asked me to give the amethyst to Emily. I'd usually feel strange taking the credit, but let's be honest, this is actually from me. Clint didn't provide this gift, I did. I got a very cheesy joke from Sophia, pun completely intended. Then I foraged the day away in West Indesat for my first Saturday sesh of the season, giving me enough stuff for my first set of winter seeds. When I got in that night, I drank a bedtime Joja Cola. I have been doing this daily, but I thought it would be repetitive now to keep mentioning. I walked out on day 91 to find Pierre at my door. Ew. He said if I keep buying seeds from him, I'll be twice as productive next year. Is he seeing things? I haven't bought a single seed from him. Morris appeared here right after with his own exciting news. The warehouse was available for an entertainment opportunity, but needed investment, so I should go speak to him if I was interested. I left this for now because I knew it would cost half a million gold, which I didn't have, nor did I want to spend. What I did want to spend my gold on was the Iridium pickaxe upgrade to make Skull Caverns easier. I took the free mix seeds from the clearance bin, then saw Claire seemingly enjoying herself at the exercise class. It's good to see her integrating with everyone. I was sure she worked up an appetite, so I asked if she wanted to grab food at the saloon. We'll make an exception for the friendship. The whole menu looked great, but I opted for the zucchini fritters. I could go for some of those right now. Full from lunch, I went to Pierre's bearing gifts, most importantly for Caroline as it was her birthday. On day 92, I got some wool in the mail, which was perfect to cover for shipping. I made another 21 kegs, which filled out this area perfectly. Then I set off the next batch of pumpkin juice. With that area full, I began filling out the caves. These are fun free spaces for processing machines. Winter is for decorating. So I put down some paths, but decided I didn't like this mismatch, so I kind of make it like a decked area. I also added paths through the kegs because if you didn't already know, we walk a tiny bit faster on them. Peak efficiency. The evening was spent on what felt like the endless task of chopping down farm trees. Day 93 was a good luck day, so I geared up for Skull Caverns. I couldn't go early though because I needed to pick up my pickaxe, and on my way to Clint's I checked the special orders board and decided to go with the tropical fish one because I didn't feel like digging up 100 ginger. I collected my shiny new pickaxe and walked straight to the desert. I wanted to get as much loot and iridium as possible, even finding my first auto grabber, which is a win because I can't just go and buy one from Marnie. I passed out on floor 76 that day, but other than the auto grabber, everything else I got was just okay. The void chick hatched this day, but I seem to have forgotten this was a chicken and not a lizard, so I named it Pascal. Oopsie. 
I planted my free pomegranate sapling in the greenhouse before getting that silly tomato cutscene. I know tomatoes are technically a fruit, but I'd be upset too if I asked for fruit and got tomatoes. I don't even like tomatoes. Unless it's in sauce form. I don't really know why that is, they just taste so different. Anyway, I also got a cutscene with Sebastian who was understandably frustrated that nobody took his job seriously. Then it was over to Willy's to upgrade my rod to Iridium, which should make the tropical fish quest significantly easier. I remembered to bring the skull to the island, thus completing another fossil. Gimme them walnuts. I needed the dopamine boost from those rewards to carry me through all the fishing I was about to have to do. On day 95, I took a brief break from fishing to access Mr. Key's walnut room for the first time. For my first key quest, I picked Skull Cavern Invasion because I can't stand that key's crop quest. Although, both options were kinda difficult for our first ones. Then, it was back to fishing. I caught all the discus and limefish I needed, so that was enough fishing for one day. I left the stingrays alone for now, but as I pulled into Willy's shop, I was surprised to find him dealing with a crab problem. Gus came to his aid though, and took them off his hands for crab cakes. I know he said not to tell Willy, but what does he think Gus will do with them? He literally sells food after all. I stopped by the Adventurers Guild to say hello to Marlon, where I got introduced to Alicia. This was important because it was the last event I needed to get access to the Enchanted Grove, which if you don't know what that is, you'll be seeing very soon. In fact, the wizard was at my door first thing on day 96 to talk to me about it. All I had to do was head to his tower, but first, a new batch of juice. With that now dealt with, I was off to see the wizard who made me drink something weird again. A little dodgy, but then I felt something change within myself. I then also unlocked the Shrine of Illusions, and I don't know if it's just me, but I think the wizard looks great in pink. I actually kind of prefer it. I handed him a Void Essence for a request, then went on my way. I cleared out Sprite Spring which had loads of goodies to collect, then went home to gather at least some of the fibre that was ready. It's so satisfying, this will never get old. Towards the end of the day, I was hyped to find more free strawberry seeds in the sale bin, then it was time to meet the wizard, do a little bit of magic, and unlock our nexus. The Enchanted Grove is so pretty, I love it here. Of course, the first warp point we get is to the wizards, and we'll be getting more locations as we progress through the game. The other amazing thing about this is we can now get dewdrop berries here, an amazing all day buff food including plus two luck and plus two speed. Great for skull caverns, amongst other things. Day 97 started with some free hay from Marnie. I chopped trees outside Robin's till she opened so I could ask her for a barn upgrade. I dropped Linus the iron bar he asked for, then as I was now low on wood I chopped more trees by the train station. I realised I was coming up to that tropical fish deadline so I crafted a couple of cork bobbers. Stingrays are such a pain, it took me till nightfall to successfully catch all five that I needed. Then I gratefully received my reward, relieved to be done with fishing for now. Goodbye bubble spot, I will not be needing you. With exactly 20 walnuts, I could build the farm obelisk, which I made use of right away so I could store all my fish, then rounded off the day by making a warp from my farm to the nexus. I woke up on day 98 with the achievement of having made 1 million gold, another major goal completed. I'd now unlocked the option to build a tractor garage from Robin, but I won't be getting one just yet because we need the gold for other things. Willy had somehow crammed an entire deluxe fish tank into my mailbox. Maybe Rasmodius isn't the only wizard in town. It was the last day we could do the Skull Caverns invasion, which was also a very good luck day. Harvey's birthday will have to wait. Being a Sunday, I could also trade more staircases. Then between the bombs, shafts and stairs, I successfully reached floor 100 in one piece that evening. Also getting the cutscene for the nasty snake milk. Two birds, one stone. Super gross, but our health is permanently increased by 25. I carried on through the night to see how far I could get, and to gather as much radioactive ore as possible eventually passing out on floor 117. As per tradition, here is my morning after haul, including two prizzies, loads of iridium ore, and a decent amount of the radioactive stuff, which I began smelting right away so I could have some on hand. I crafted some more iridium sprinklers to add to my crop fields and my greenhouse, then relaxed for the daylight hours with a bit of minor farm decorating. On my way to the night market, I picked up Pierre's prime produce before buying the painting from the sketchy art guy. He doesn't count, okay? I also shopped with the travelling merchant and spent this night deep sea fishing, being lucky enough to fish up a pearl. Day 100 began with refilling my jars and kegs. To set myself up for the next 100 days, I spent the majority of this day chopping wood. I did make a stop off at Sprite Springs to set up a warp, then I remembered about Pierre's prime produce. I bought a load of pumpkin seeds, then promptly realised these would take a little bit too long. At least I could save these for next year. 
Instead, I opted for a load of bok choy seeds since they have a short growing time, just in case I don't get the 25 gold ones from the first harvest. With that now dealt with, there was still enough time to hit up the night market to buy the next painting. If you thought I'd spent my last night fishing, you got another thing coming. Nope. I went home to place two auto petters i just bought from Jojo Mart, then headed to bed at a somewhat decent time, making 76,000 gold. Farm tour time! First, let's admire this Jojo themed house one more time. Isn't it a beauty? Then, up to the right we have our keg operations, which I'm super happy about our progress with. Below the keg area, we have our animals home. We've got our fully upgraded coop, which houses a few little animal friends. And then right next door is our completely empty barn, which I need to at least repaint the exterior of. Carrying on south, we've got our well-sized crop areas and our oak risen farm, which leads to our nice big greenhouse. One day, this will hopefully all be filled with ancient fruit. Looping back up the path, we have the storage area as well as the rest of the processing machines. There's a lot more of the farm I haven't made use of yet. This map is enormous, and we still have plenty of time to add to it. The only goal that we didn't meet in this 100 days was 10 hearts with Morris, so we just have to pick this up in the next 100 days. If you made it this far, you should definitely drop a like, and if you enjoy this type of content, please do subscribe for more. Thank you so much to my channel members, and I will see you in the next video. Bye!